Mr. King, many black artists and musicians felt differently. In the 50s and 60s, radio was viciously separated. It was hard for black artists to get their music played on mainstream stations. But that did not stop record label executives and white artists from discovering music from black artists and covering their songs. Elvis was arguably one of the biggest stars to cover songs by black artists while mimicking their mannerisms and vocal inflections. And I said to King of what, and he got mad at me. You see, I don't think of Elvis like that because I know too many artists that are far, much, far greater than Elvis. I think Elvis was a person came along at the right time where he was a white kid that could do rock and roll or rhythm and blues or whatever name you want to call it and the girls could swoon over him. Nat Cole got in trouble in Alabama when the women swooned over him, got put out of town. And black people been going out shaking their behind for, for, for centuries. And what the hell is unusual about that shaking the hips and stuff? And that's all Elvis was doing was copying that. This is Otis Blackwell. He is the voice and pen behind some of Elvis's biggest hits, such as Don't Be Cruel and All Shook Up. After briefly pursuing a solo career, he decided to step behind the scenes and become a songwriter when he discovered how good of a living he can actually make doing that. Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. Now, that was a clip of Elvis Presley and what Ray Charles had to say about him. Um, now, if you saw the clip, that means YouTube let it go through. If not, that means I was flagged. Did you know Elvis Presley was a music thief? This is 10 times the so-called king of rock and roll stole from black music artists. Supposedly, there's an Elvis Presley movie in the making debuting this summer. However, the black community recognizes him as a musical thief, stealing from lesser known blues artists. Elvis has had an affinity for black music and culture since he was born in Tulipo, Mississippi. He grew up on the black side of town. He will later run with the likes of Ike Turner and B.B. King. It's evident that black musicians greatly influenced him. Nothing wrong with that, right? Yet, because he had a white skin tone, doors were open for him that weren't open to black musicians, despite them having the talent. According to Elvis Presley, I've always wanted to sing like Billy Kenny of the Ink Spots, he told Jet Magazine in 1957. I like that high, smooth style. I never sang like this in my life until I made that first record. That's all right, mama. I remember that song because I heard Arthur Big Boy crude up sing it and I thought I would like to try it. It is widely known that Elvis stole one of his biggest hits, Hound Dog, from talented black vocalist Big Mama Thornton. Prominent musicians and producers explained their personal encounters with Elvis. Some called him a friend and even a brother, like James Brown, while others referred to him as a crook, whose entire discography was built off the backs and skills of black folks. Legendary producer and musician Quincy Jones shared his personal interactions with him, which left a bad taste in his mouth. No, I wouldn't work with him, Quincy told The Hollywood Reporter. I was writing for orchestra leader Tommy Dorsey on Old God back in 1950, and Elvis walked in, and Tommy said, I don't want to work with him. He was a racist mother, referring to Tommy. But every time I saw Elvis, he was being coached by a songwriter, Otis Blackwell, telling him how to sing. Shirley Elvis wasn't the first nor the last white artist to build some fame or legacy at the hands of black people. There's no real justice the artists he has stolen from can receive now that these thieves are no longer here. This is highlighting Black Music Month and their memory by going down memory lane, the many black artists Elvis Presley stole from throughout his career. Number one, Big Mama Thornton, Hound Dog. Number two, Lloyd Price, Lordy Miss Claudie. Number three, Chuck Berry, Memphis, Tennessee. Number four, Laverne Baker, Tweet Elite. Number five, Ray Charles, what did I say? Number six, Roy Hamilton, Unchained Melody. Number seven, Arthur Big Boy Cruda, So Glad You're Mine. Number eight, Junior Parker, Mystery Train. Number nine, Fast Domino, Ain't That a Shame. Number 10, Arthur Gunter, Baby Let's Play House. Elvis was bold. He didn't have the decency to change some of the background music or lyrics, knowing damn well that he stole these folks' music right under their noses. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And sorry for any noise or whatever you heard in the background. I'm actually doing laundry. That's the dryer going. 